Okay, this video is on the normal distribution. Now, when you draw a dot plot for some data sets, you get a distribution that has a particular shape. And this shape, it looks kind of like these two curves here. These shapes are called normal distributions, or sometimes you hear them called a bell-shaped curve because they have a shape that looks kind of like a bell. And anytime you have a normally distributed data set, if you were to plot all of the data points in your data set in a dot plot, then you would get the dots would take on this shape, this bell shape. So for any normally distributed data set, there are going to be two values that will tell us a great deal about the data set. One of these we've already talked about, the mean, which is a measure of central tendency. And for a normally distributed uh, data set, when we draw the normal curve, the mean is this point right here in the center. So that would be the mean for this normally distributed data set. And for this one, it would be right here. Now, the other value that will tell us a great deal about a normally distributed data set is called the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is a measure of spread, which, remember, is a measure that tells us how spread out our data are going to be about the center of the data set. We've already talked about one measure of spread with regard to box plots. That was the interquartile range. Well, for a normally distributed data set, if the mean is this point right here in the center, the standard deviation, it, since it tells us about how the data are spread out about the mean, for this data set, for example, notice that it's kinda, it kind of looks wider. This data set looks skinnier. This curve looks skinnier. That indicates that I would expect the standard deviation on this data set would be larger, and this would be the standard deviation. I would expect the standard deviation on this data set that's more spread out, I would expect that standard deviation to be larger than the standard deviation on this data set. And this point right here, we would say this point on our, on our graph, on our distribution, this would represent one standard deviation above the mean. This represents one standard deviation above the mean here. All right. Now, let's take a look at this example here in your notes. It says, if you want to find out how consistently rubber bands will travel when launch, you use a ruler to launch two rubber bands seven times each, and you generate the following two data sets. All right, so we take these two rubber bands, and we take a ruler, and we pull the rubber bands back to the same point on the ruler, and we launch them. We measure how far the rubber bands travel. So our rubber band number one, I see that I have seven distances here, 182, 186. These are all in centimeters. And for rubber band number two, I've got these six distances. And now, just looking at the numbers, I can tell something about the two rubber bands. First thing I notice is that most of my values here, in fact, all of my values for rubber band number one, they look to be fairly close together. For rubber band number two, it looks like they're a little bit more spread out. So I'm starting to uh, already think that I'm going to have my measure of spread here for this one is going to be larger than my measure of spread for this one. Well, the first thing I want to do for these two rubber bands is I want to draw a dot plot for each one of these rubber bands. So draw a dot plot for rubber band number one, and I've got my two uh, number lines here that I've tried to draw fairly to scale, pretty close to scale. And I'm going to plot my, uh, I'm going to draw my dot plot here for rubber band number one on this first one. So let's see, 182, one dot here for 182, 186. Another one for 182, 184, 185, another one for 184, and another one for 185. So there's my seven data points for rubber band number one. If I draw my dot plot for rubber band number two, let's see, 152, it's going to be about here, 194, about here. 166, 
216 200 176 and 184 and yeah just as I suspected all my data points here for rubber band number one are kind of bunched up here together my data points for rubber band number two are kind of spread out so I'm gonna expect that any measures of spread that I have my measure spread on this one is gonna be larger my measure spread on this one is gonna be smaller so and now another thing I notice is that it looks like my measure of center it looks like the center point for both of these data sets is right around here is right around 184 and in fact if I calculate my mean value for each of these two data sets that is if I type each of these seven data values into one of my lists in my calculator and I calculate the mean I determine that the mean for rubber band number one is equal to 184 and the mean for rubber band number two is also 184 so right here is the measure of central tendency for this rubber band and right here is the measure of central tendency for this rubber band now what I want to do next is calculate the standard deviation which is supposed to be a measure of spread and see if in fact my standard deviation for this rubber band is going to be smaller than my standard deviation for this rubber band. So let's see how we go about calculating standard deviation. Okay, so to calculate standard deviation, I want to take each one of my data points and I've filled in each one of the data points. We're going to do this just for rubber band number one. So for each data point for rubber band number one, I've got it filled in here. And I next want to fill in this column, the mean for each one of the data points. Well, I only have a single mean for my entire data set. And I remember that mean is 184. So 184 is the mean for the whole data set. So each one of these data points, they have the same mean. Next, I want to calculate something called the deviation from the mean. The deviation from the mean just means how far away is each individual data point from the mean. Well, to do that, essentially I just take the data point and I subtract the mean. So I say data point, data point minus mean. So 182 minus 184, that deviation from the mean is going to be negative 2. 186 minus 184, that's 2. So negative 2, 184 minus 184 is 0, 1, 0, and 1. So I've calculated the deviation from the mean for each one of my data points. Next, I want to square each one of my deviations from the mean. Okay, negative 2 squared is 4, 2 squared is 4, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So now I have all these seven values that represent the squared deviation from the mean for each one of my data points. Next, I want to add up all of these squared deviations from the mean. 12, that's going to give me 14. Now that I have all my squared deviations from the mean, I'm going to calculate something called the variance, and that's going to help me get to the standard deviation. The variance is calculated like this. The variance for this data set is the sum of the squared deviations from the mean, which is 14. And I'm going to divide the sum of the squared deviations by the number of data points that I have minus 1. Now we're going to talk a little bit more in class about why we decide to do it this way, but essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with an average value for the squared deviations from the mean. And you might think, well, why not just divide it by 7? Again, we're going to talk about that a little bit more in class. So 14 divided by 7 minus 1, that's 14 divided by 6. And if you punch that into your calculator, you get 2.33. And this value is called the variance. Now, finally, after all of this arithmetic, I can calculate the standard deviation for this data set. And the standard deviation is 2.33. 
the square root of the variance. Well, the variance for this data set I just calculated is 2.33. The square root of 2.33 is 1.53. And this is the standard deviation for this data set. Now, if I were to go through this same bit of arithmetic here for my rubber band number two, my second data set, then I could come up with the standard deviation for that data set. In other words, if I just filled in each one of my data points and the mean for my second data set, which is also 184, calculated the deviation from the mean for each one of my data points, squared each one of the deviations from the means, then added those up, divided again by 7 minus 1, or 6, I'd get the variance, and then I'd take the square root of the variance for my second data set, and that would give me a value of 21.57. And we can see, just as we suspected, the standard deviation, that is the measure of spread of my first data set, is much smaller than the measure of spread for my second data set. Now, let's see what this would look like if we were to graph a bell-shaped curve or a normal distribution curve for each one of these data sets. So my first data set, which has, remember, a mean of 184 and a standard deviation of 1.53, well, this is going to be a kind of skinny bell-shaped curve. Here's my mean. My mean is 184. My standard deviation, so my mean is 184. My standard deviation is 1.53. So that standard deviation is going to be, be pretty close to right here. So here's my standard deviation, 1.53. So this represents my first rubber band, rubber band number one. If I were to draw my normally distributed, my normal curve for my second data set, my second rubber band, I'm going to have a much more spread out normal curve. My mean is still going to be 184, but my standard deviation is going to be larger, which means my data are going to be spread out more. In this case, my standard deviation is 21.57. So I'm going to have a larger standard deviation, and therefore my data are going to be spread out more, and my normal-shaped curve is going to be spread out more than my rubber band 